So George headed home with one dozen donuts, and everything was perfect. <laughs> Wait! I don't have your address! <laughs> he must be late. <laughs> oh, you took too long to make the donuts there. <laughs> Charge while I'm gone, Hundley. Hmm. George realized he couldn't go home because then those donut people would know where he lived. <laughs> Woo! We're right behind you! <laughs> <laughs> so, in the end, George headed home with one dozen donuts. There's no monkey on that dog. <laughs> <laughs> monkey! We lost him. <laughs> Doorman. Hunley saw them outside and barked. Somehow, he knew they were looking for you. He's so smart. Relax, monkey. Donuts are here. Phew. Everything's okay. Mmm, <laughs> wow, those smell so good. I'm sorry I didn't ask you to buy more than one dozen. You look hungry, George. I'll make eggs, then it's donut time. It's a little dark in here. I'll open some curtains. So, anything exciting happened today, George? I passed by the D family. They look pretty happy. So what do you want, scrambled? How about fried? Mm, I never realized how nicely insulated this handle is. Just be careful. Hey, wait a minute. I don't remember buying this car. Did you put that donut there? Oh, what a waste of food. Now we only have 11 to eat. Here's the, say, where'd they all go? A uh, what? A hundred dozen donuts. A hundred do We have one dozen donuts? Look. <laughs> well, Miss Donuts asked me to give you the bill. Wow, what a mistake. How could they think you bought a hundred dozen don- What? How did- Oh. Why, George? <laughs> well, at least I know you were paying attention. We've got to put these donuts in bags or something. <laughs> What are we going to do with them all? <laughs> so in the end, George got one dozen donuts, like he was supposed to. And the hard-working firefighters thought everything was perfect. How many left, George? <laughs> George had three great-looking boats. But just looking boaty didn't make them float. Oh. 
<laughs> At last, George had something he knew would float. Bill wasn't going to win any contest with a tiny board. <laughs> no! <laughs> and this is what he had to work with. <laughs> Maybe it was time to study boats in action. Wide boats seem to work well. Steam coming out. A propeller. And a good solid bottom. Okay, a wide boat with steam coming out, and a propeller. All done! I'm just gonna drop my bike at home. Would you mind watching my boat for a few more minutes? delivery is an exact business. People expect it at the same time every day. <laughs> Thanks for watching my boat. Where is my boat? George! You built this yourself? <laughs> wow. I thought city kids just bought everything. Where'd you say my boat was? George? <laughs> I forgot to close the windows. Thanks for showing me. I would have really been sunk if it happened in the contest. <laughs> Model boating requires utmost attention to tiny details. And keeping the water out. <laughs> Come on, let's go enter. Hey, you gotta bring your boat to enter it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Who else has a boat like that? Let's hear it for our winners! <laughs> Congratulations, George. I, I didn't even know you built a boat. I convinced him to enter it. And did you see this? It says best boat by a monkey. <laughs> That's funny. They must have run out of regular ribbons. I'll take care of this. I'll ask him to make you one that says best boat by a city kid. <laughs> he hopes studying the big clock would show him exactly what to do with the little clock. Yeah. <laughs> 
George was glad that noise had stopped. But maybe it was time to pack up and go home. That clock has never stopped, ever! The big clock on the library stopped. Well, let's go! Wait, Stu. What are we supposed to do? We're the fire department. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Mr. Rilo, the big clock stopped. The big library clock that the whole city depends upon? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that clock has never stopped, ever. We must move like lightning. Sure, he had all the tools, but George still felt like he was missing something. Okay, miss, thank you. Uh, please, step outside. I must listen. What's a little monkey like you doing in a huge clock like this? <laughs> well, would you like me to help you? <laughs> okay, and this goes there. Now, you see? <gasps> what a beautiful clock. Did you make it? I know everything about clocks, but not one thing about understanding monkey. <laughs> well, be more careful in the future, eh? Time is a precious thing. What have we said about bringing pigeons indoors, George? Oh. oh, it's all right. Are you showing him my clock? <laughs> well, go ahead. George, how did this heavy metal toolbox get so... making oven was even more amazing than the floppification pot. Oh. oh, my goodness. If Salatesio likes my food, she should tell everybody to eat here. <laughs> Wish me luck! <laughs> George wanted to show Noki how pots make things floppy. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> what was all of that noise? Huh? I give up. What have you done? But I can't serve delicate pasta with a little monkey sitting in it. <laughs> eh, at least I still have this batch of plain spaghetti. George <laughs> knew the chef would be happy with all the fun extra things he'd turned floppy. <sighs> Who turned my plain pasta into crowded spoon soup? Somehow, floppification didn't work on spoons. There isn't one cherry tomato in this salad. You promised cherry tomatoes. Well, I... Oh, oh don't. Wait. No, please. I... I don't like this at all. But it smells good. She was right. The longer that stuff stayed in the floppifying pot, the better it smelled. Do you know there's a cat and a monkey in your kitchen? Oh. <laughs> uh, the monkey uh, made the stew. Ooh, quite good. Oh, but you said you don't like it. If you made it, it's no good. But for a monkey, woohoo! What's his recipe? Well, uh... Never mind, I got it. Chef Biscetti didn't scold George much, but he insisted George clean up the mess he made. Oh, you're lucky you got the four heads. You can do things twice as quickly. <laughs> I wish I knew how you chose these ingredients. Asparagus. The green spears turned out nice and floppy. One hard-boiled egg. The egg didn't look floppy at all. Eggs don't floppify. <laughs> they get harder. A lot of cheese. And cheese becomes goop. <laughs> Cooking seemed to have no rules at all. I'm done! You said there'd be cookies. Please, this dish was excellent. What do you call it? Southern emergency ravioli and a meatball. Four stars. And another star for the meatball. I'll give your monkey a star, too. Oh, I'm so generous. Hot cookies coming up as promised. How did he make that into that? Maybe kitchens aren't magic. Maybe... It's cooks who are magic. Yoki, how you can lose so many balls, huh? Meow. Any day that starts out just smelling <laughs> and ends with a cookie <laughs> is a pretty great day. <laughs> Being a dog, Hunley had tasted a lot of tennis balls. But these were the first that ever tasted like ink. These were the valuable balls the doorman promised to protect. <laughs> Hunley couldn't stop George from opening boxes that he thought belonged to him. But he knew how to play defense. It was tough for George to guess who sent all this stuff to him. On, there's a monkey and a wiener dog at the door. <gasps> Those careless delivery guys. If any of my balls aren't properly packed, I'm going to be very upset. Now George understood. These boxes belonged here, 
and the delivery man gave them to George by mistake. I'll be down to check every last one as soon as I'm off the phone. They had to clean up before the ball collector came downstairs. All they had to do was put the balls back into the right boxes. How hard could that be? Sometimes things don't fit when they look like they should. Or they fit in more than one place. <laughs> but there's only one place they really belong. And once you figure that out, it's easy. Even if you're a monkey. Hunley showed George how to lay them flat. <laughs> they did it. All the balls were back where they started. Kind of. Like they're all here. Oh, even the priceless Andy Turkey Rolly Perfect Score Bowling Ball. <sighs> I'm back. Huh? Is everything okay? My delivery came. Your dog and monkey took care of everything. That's great. Thank you, Hundley. Thank you, George. It's nice to know Hundley has help keeping the place clean and organized. George, would you like to help Hundley again tomorrow morning? You can be my official door monkey. I won't be here and tomorrow is water delivery day. <laughs> oh, that's a nice recording of a cricket. Was it one of these? You know, hundreds of crickets chirping together can make a soothing, peaceful sound. But one little cricket in a quiet house can drive you bananas. Is there one in our house? <laughs> well, he probably wants to get out and go home. Here, uh, catch him and free him outside. And here's a tip, George. Crickets are attracted to light. <laughs> <laughs> now that the mystery was solved and George knew what he was looking for, this was going to be easy. George was already smarter than a cricket, and he knew how to be faster.
then, a strange new sound. <laughs> and then George set the cricket free to happily hop back to his cricket home. <laughs> Did you free that cricket? Good work! I am sure that's one happy cricket. <laughs> okay, um, that cricket left us some cleanup work, don't you think, George? <laughs> George. <laughs> Are you sure you put it outside? <laughs> you know, George, if we don't catch that cricket, we'll never get any sleep. The man with the yellow hat didn't have the cricket, but he did have a solution. George, a dog pile, Hunley knew this meant trouble for someone. <laughs> no papers, no yellow hat. The man must have gone out to drop off his work. The place was filled with strange dogs. Very strange dogs. How many dogs did George have in here? George wanted to know how many dogs he had, too. He counted. But he stopped at 37. That sounded wrong. And he never counted that little one at all. He wanted to count every dog only once. So he stuck the three small ones in his room, where he knew he could see them. big ones into the man with the yellow hat's room, where they couldn't run around so much. And the hairy ones went in the bathroom. George wanted this one in with the big dogs. But it was hairy enough to go with the Harrys. Ha <laughs> ha 
There were three big, three small, and three hairy dogs. George, I'm home. Oh, Hunley, <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> My new spread, George, there are like 20 dogs in here. <laughs> George remembered all the dogs. So, where did these three and three and three nine dogs come from? <laughs> I'm just so happy they're all back and all safe. Well, everyone's back where they belong. <laughs> huh? Hundley! <laughs> Stop the car! Hey! Hundley's in there! Come back! Just how big is this fish you're after, George? <laughs> well, you might as well be hunting for tadpoles. <laughs> there you go. Try this one. <laughs> George knew nothing about water beetles except that they couldn't help him find his tadpoles. <laughs> now, this was a strange creature. It looked like a tadpole, sort of. Swam like a tadpole, kind of. But it had legs, almost no tail. Not like a tadpole. <laughs> hey, George! My tadpoles aren't giving you any problems, are they? Oh! <laughs> Good! Bring them over sometime for a visit, okay? Uh -huh. <laughs> George knew that someday he'd have to tell Bill he'd lost the tadpoles. And he knew he might never see his little friends again. Back in the city, George tried to take his mind off the tadpoles. It wasn't easy. George couldn't believe it. That odd little creature was one of his tadpoles, and he let it go. <laughs> but George, we just visited the lake. We'll go back next month. Bill said the tadpoles would grow up in amazing ways. But how much would they grow in a whole month? And into what? George, we've been looking all over for you. You got like 800 pounds of boiled lettuce. <gasps> now George really had to get back to the lake. But it was weeks before he could go. <laughs> Luckily, George didn't see any signs of jumbo tadpoles. But he couldn't find his friends either. Uh -huh. 
These loud frogs probably scared the tadpoles away. It was time for George to tell Bill he'd lost the tadpoles. Hey, George! That was a good idea to release my tadpoles into their natural habitat. How'd you like watching them grow into frogs? Pretty neat, huh? Uh-huh. Just like my caterpillar changed into a butterfly. See? The tadpoles were right here all the time. They had just been, well, growing up. Smile, George! Before long, George thought the frogs were even more fun than the tadpoles. Well, most of the time. He forgot to refill it. <laughs> George found out the hard way that the hose was too short. Maybe it didn't have to reach. He could spray it from here. George knew they were down to only a duck and a half. He had to get water up that hill somehow. He needed something that held water, but was smaller than a pail. This was going to take a few trips. George knew he couldn't fill the pool in time. It was over. George, I saw you running up and down. What are you doing trying to fill a pool one cup at a time? Uh huh. Huh, city kids, there are proper ways to carry water. I'll show you. <laughs> Stop there, or it'll be too heavy. Uh -huh. Well, I carry one up. You fill the other one halfway. This is called a bucket brigade. George's idea worked. A happy ending for ducks and duck lovers. This is way
way too close to the edge. I'll pull it back. moment, Jumpy remembered why he always stayed in trees. George, is that yo, my hat? You know, there's a proper method for mop squeezing. Yep, I know, Bill. George, I want to remind you, those ducks are here temporarily. <laughs> George wondered exactly how long he could make temporarily last. You're not Dr. Kazund. Are you really a doctor? <laughs> I've been waiting so long, I don't even care. <laughs> I have this terrible ah, ah, sneeze. It goes away, it comes back, it goes away. <laughs> the sweater was muffling the sounds inside. There was one way to fix that. <laughs> uh, should I keep breathing? It might help if I take this off. Monkey, Do doctor, monkey. <gasps> oh, I'm not cured. <gasps> I'm allergic to this sweater. You're the best doctor I've ever had. <laughs> and I'm not just saying that because you're a monkey. George had cured his first patient, but then. Is that you? A doctor never ignores a patient in need. <laughs> hey, you're a monkey. <laughs> my problem is my arm, not my throat. I'll wait for Dr. Gazoon, because you're a monkey. Did you hear that weird noise, too? What is that? Shh. I've had the hiccups for two weeks. I get... Stop! <laughs> well, aren't you gonna help me? What kind of... Monkey doctor, are you? Shh. That's him. That's the monkey that tried to make me go, ah! He's a genius monkey doctor. He discovered my allergy. George, do you have permission to be a doctor? Shh. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on out here? George, what are you wearing? You haven't performed any operations, have you? <laughs> what was that? You don't know? I figured it was your medical machinery. Shh. <laughs> 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 <gasps> <gasps> 
Dr. Gazoon. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Hello. I, I came in here during my break to play just one round. I, I must have lost track of time. Nothing feels as great as monkey curiosity satisfied. Oh my! My hiccups are cured! <laughs> George liked the stethoscope and Dr. Coat so much that Dr. Baker let him keep them. <laughs> and though Hunley was grateful the lobby was peaceful, he started to worry that someday, George might really be his doctor. George tried a lot of doors, but he didn't find the way out. He didn't realize he'd left the door open. He thought he'd better bring those penguins back. And then, he couldn't find them either. He might have left more than one door open. Even worse, he was back where he started. George decided maybe all zoos should be like this. Until he realized all the noise was waking up the baby. Well, at least the meerkats were home. It wasn't easy, but he put every last animal back. Still, the animals all looked unhappy. Maybe meerkats don't live on ice. Where did he first see them? <laughs> this map was good for more than just finding the panda. It showed where all the animals belonged. Ah. Oh, George left that panda cam running. Say, where is George? The zoo must be closed by now. George! to get back to their own environments. So just by following what was next to what, George got everyone home. Everyone except himself. This map was the most amazing thing George had ever seen, except for the baby panda. George! George, are you in there? After all he'd done, George didn't want the man with the yellow hat to wake up the baby. Well, 
Come on out of there. The zoo is closed. <laughs> Did you like the baby panda? <laughs> The orangutan liked his home, but he thought, there goes the luckiest monkey on the face of the earth. And wonder what was in that box. He'd seen how heavy these boxes were, so he gave a mighty monkey tug and found out he wasn't the only thing that weighed less in space. Toys! It was full of toys! <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor George. I hope he's not too scared being alone and out of contact. <laughs> George had never seen a top spin so long before. Space was a great place to play. George wondered whether these toys would be more fun if he had someone to play with. He's coming back into communication range. What's happened? Where's George? George, you must put the experiments away. Uh, hurry, it's almost time to send them to the space station. Well, at least he didn't free the ants. Huh? If ants get into the back, they might eat the astronauts' food. In 28 seconds, he'll be in position to launch the payload. <laughs> you have 20 seconds to get everything ready to launch. George wasn't ready in time. He's got to do it next time around. George, you'll only get one more chance. Then succeed or fail, we have to bring you home. We are really hungry. Hard to believe but cleaning his room had prepared George for an important mission in space. Ready? George, are you ready to launch? Uh -huh. Excellent. I'll tell you when. Oh, maybe we shouldn't have sent a monkey. Shh. Now, George, now! George? Thank you, George. <laughs> You're in position to return home. Pull the lever to fire propulsion rockets. George, pull the lever now or you'll be out of position. What happens if he pulls the lever late? 
He could land anywhere, top of a mountain, the North Pole. George, pull the lever now. So, George was a hero. <laughs> and he proved just because you're a small monkey doesn't mean you can't take care of everything Aww. down to the tiniest details.